Hi everyone, on the show, Bishop Hepworth, Archbishop Hepworth. We have Mark Cahoon and we have John Stoneham, the famous cartoonist. But most importantly, we have you. Now, if it's in the news, on your mind, close to your heart, getting up your nose or on your chest, it is in the Court of Public Opinion. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you stay and enjoy the show. This is the second last show for the year. And I'd like to extend a very big welcome to Rundle Mall. That's our, our new sponsor. And that's all the stores and indeed all the people who go to Rundle Mall to make it the most successful shopping precinct in our state. Now, I want you to watch the Rundle Mall ad. When you see it, uh, you will get the clues which could win you $500. So, good luck. Now, this week is all about interest rates. Interest rates are a, a very, well, for a start, they're a blunt instrument if you are trying to do something with the economy. I don't know what this crowd in Canberra is trying to do with the economy, but I really do think that it is about the economy that we all should be concerned. I couldn't quite understand the interest rates go down and the value of the dollar goes up, that shouldn't happen. Our economy is obviously a very complicated thing. Now, it's also a double-edged sword in that there are a lot of people who depend on the income from their savings in the bank or fixed-term deposits or whatever, they're self-funded retirees. Self-funded retirees get ignored all the time. Now, I have a mortgage, so I like the idea that interest rates are going down. But the truth of the matter is that one third of our population has a mortgage. One third of our population rents. The other third has paid off the mortgage and isn't affected one way or the other. So if you've got savings, well, gee whiz, uh, you don't want to see the savings diminish in terms of the return on that money every month because you depend on it, you live on it. And you, as a self-funded retiree, are a wonderful person because you're not a burden on society. But something more about this economy that worries me, when I see Rosella in business for 118 years, Daryl Lee in business for 85 years, not in business anymore, Alan's Billy Hyde, Alan's Music, 160 years in business, no more. Angus and Robertson, 128 years old. Kellen Rigby Constructions, 102 years in business. Fletcher Jones, 88 years in business. Now there is something wrong with our economy because all these great iconic brands have in fact survived world wars, depressions and recessions, but they can't survive what is, well, I suppose, what passes for our government in Canberra. They have a lot to talk about. They've got a lot to explain. I'm Jeremy Cordo, and this is the Court of Public Opinion. Really good to be with you. Now, I just want to say happy birthday, the late Walt Disney. I wonder if that story about him freezing himself uh, cryogenically, or whatever they call it, to be brought back to life at some time is true. But anyway, he was born in Chicago, December 5, and a, a week of birthdays also includes Amanda Vanstone, happy birthday, Senator, and also um, December 6, it's St. Nicholas Day. Uh, he is celebrated as the original Father Christmas. I hope you like the tree, by the way. No, and I didn't get it at auction. That's, that's the one from uh, upstairs. Uh, the original Father Christmas. He's also the patron saint of schoolboys, sailors, thieves, virgins, Turkey, Greece, and pagan Russia. I wonder if these people ever had a say in who they got to be patron saint of. It's a very mixed bag, isn't it? Among his miracles, he's said to have resurrected two little boys who were sliced up by an innkeeper and pickled in brine. And even as an infant, he was working towards canonization soon after his birth. Now, this is not me. This is apparently true. Uh, but I'll ask the archbishop in just a second. Soon after his birth, he's supposed to have stood up in the bath and thanked God. Now, what little boy stands up in the bath and thanks anybody, let alone God? And while still on the breast, he refused to sup on fast days. Now, I, I put that in the category of, you know, you could almost believe 
anything that you read. Now it's with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce you to Archbishop John Hepworth who has an opinion as I said on just about everything you can think of. Great to be with you Jeremy. Now do you believe that St Nicholas was... Oh Jeremy, <laughs> I was once in Brussels to address uh, a meeting at the, of the European uh, Parliament on um, uh, religious persecution in, in Asia oh, yeah. uh, in December oh, yeah. and uh, uh, naturally the airline lost my clothes so I was given a vast sum of money to go and buy new bishop's gear in Brussels <laughs> which I did with great gusto uh, in, in amidst <laughs> the snow and everything. Every department store didn't have Father Christmas because of a long white beard, it had a bishop dressed beautifully in cope and mitre because the kids sit on St Nicholas's knee yeah. dressed as a proper bishop, rings Cross yeah. the lot oh, and why, why? all over Brussels. I kept yeah. meeting myself, Jeremy. It was. <laughs> You've got to be a little eccentric. I saw a wonderful clip from America last week, where, gee, mm. and I'm not sure of the city, uh, but uh, he was on one of these talk shows, American mm. talk shows, and uh, he was he was the governor, and uh, he was showing off his holiday tree. Holiday oh. tree. Oh dear. And in the background <clears throat> were all of these people holding up signs saying, It's a Christmas tree, Governor. I love it. I love yeah. it. Oh, my sentiments exactly. Yeah, Jeremy. Crazy sort of political correctness and insanity. I, I, I was talking earlier about this ridiculous situation where Rosella, as you know, has closed its doors or just about. And all of these 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 uh, companies, Darrell mm. Lee, Allen's Music, 160 years, yes. Allen Music, Angus and Robertson's 128 years, Kellen Rigby, 102 years, Fletcher Jones. Yes. What is it about mm. these times that are so bad, so destructive? Firstly, I think, Jeremy, we've had an explosion of technology such as the world hasn't seen for several thousand years. Mm. Uh, probably we'd have to go back to uh, the golden age of Athens to find a similar change in the way people live and see themselves uh, at dawn of philosophy and science and uh, the challenging of accepted order. We've now got that. Um, so that we're having a globalisation without much awareness of it on the part of the common people, mm. dare I say, um, where we've had a massive change in the way our money system works and economics, um, the nature of money even. Uh, following the collapse yeah. of Bretton Woods and gold standard and so on. The idea of money not having a fixed value but floating against market forces. This is a novel idea for humans. The whole reason our money was made of gold, silver and all that was so that we would know the fixed value and be able to pass it on at a fixed value. So why didn't we stick to a system at work? Well, we changed it to accommodate global politics and global trade. And we seem to be doing that with everything, aren't we? Yes, and the power structures of the world are changing dramatically. Uh, when you've got myriad small nations making up the power blocks in the United Nations, most of which have less employees than the most powerful corporations on Earth, yeah and the corporations yeah. are not there, they're absolutely unaccountable to international opinion. And many of them are run by tin pot, despot dictators? All of the above. Um, we've had a dramatic change in the nature of our politics because of technology. Uh, our politics is now run on what the mob thinks. Now, mm. we know what the mob does, it did it at the French Revolution, that was our, our great experience of mob rule. Yeah. Um, we used to elect people to govern us and they governed according to constitutions and ancient principles and understanding. Now we elect people to follow the 24-hour polling that says what the mob thinks. Yeah. And uh, human nature, Jeremy, is not the sort of thing that can rely on mob rule. Uh, we've understood since we began writing, since we began history, that human beings have a tendency to wrong unless they correct themselves and do right. Now, nobody in the Western world, in their education systems, and in much of the East, any longer ask the question at school or university, what are human beings for? Hmm. And to the extent we have an answer to that, Jeremy, it's the answer that the Russian Revolution gave. 
human beings exist to be a cog in the wheel of a global economic system and to serve the state. If we allow that to happen. If we allow it to happen. And this happens under the guise of democracy and Precisely. freedom of speech and all of these other things. It, it is almost the same solution whether you have pseudo-democracy based on polling and public opinion yeah. or a pseudo-democracy as we've seen in Egypt based on electing somebody who immediately becomes a dictator yeah. and introduces a form of religious law that profoundly um, discriminates against almost everybody. Yeah. Or if you take the Gaza Strip where they, uh, they democratically elected the bad guys. So how, how, how in God's name do you do that? So if you elect a bad guy with a strong constitution, the bad guy is trapped in a good system. Mm. If you elect a bad guy with a weak constitution, and throughout the world constitutions have been and are being weakened, yeah. the systems by which we govern ourselves, the basic tenets are under massive challenge. And the basic tenets come from, by and large, ancient times constantly relearnt in each generation. We are the generation that are not relearning. Therefore, instead of being up where our technology is, we're down there with people that haven't quite understood the wheel yet yeah. in terms of our self-awareness. I would love you to sit in the chair, our marvellous <laughs> chair over here, and, and give us 60 seconds that, <clears throat> in your opinion, would change the world. But I was reading this thing just quickly. Uh, the McKell Institute went out and tried to find what people were really worried about, their number one concern, mm. and it is electricity costs. Yes. Electricity costs. Yes. Of course, we have to accommodate the carbon tax somehow, but more than food, interest rates, petrol, health costs, insurance costs, electricity is the number one concern of people. But food, fuel, the petrol pump doesn't work without electricity. You can't buy and store food without no. electricity. You can't prepare it without electricity. We have made the modern world, whether it's uh, villages in Africa that I visited often as a bishop, where there'd be a simple solar cell linked up to a simple computer linked up to a simple sure. phone. Electricity and is the key. Electricity is the king to communications, to actually dealing with each other as human beings. Even our cars carry their self-generating electricity or the engine doesn't work. I've never thought about that before. Archbishop Hepworth joins us in the second, in the chair, with 60 seconds that uh, from his heart and his brilliant brain may just change the world. The most fundamental thing that would change the direction of the world at the present time would be to reintroduce into our schools and our universities globally the important philosophical questions. The world is expanding massively in knowledge of technology, knowledge of science, and our schools teach that, but hardly at all do they teach the fundamentals of how human beings should interact with each other. What are the great principles that govern our interactions, our politics, our government? The most important question that any human being can ask of themselves is what are human beings for? And that is the one question that is no longer taught or challenged in our schools. Great house. Thank you. Rossdale built it for us. We love it. I'll show you through. We wanted a house with a barley feel, so we worked with their building consultant and designers to develop a plan we liked. They were so flexible and cooperative. When it was all designed, we got an absolute fixed price and they stuck to it. No extra charges and their people were fantastic to work with. We're actually thinking of building a new home. You should go and see all their displays and talk to them about your ideas. It's the best thing we've ever done. Rossdale Homes, because trust is a must. Scammels, South Australia's specialist estate auctioneers. Visit us at 7 Chapel Street Norwood or at www.scammelauctions.com.au.
Now, don't forget to watch carefully. I know you watch the commercials. Everyone watches the commercials. Watch the Rundle Moore commercial carefully because it can win you $500, which would be nice for Christmas. Uh, we went into Rundle Mall, and some of the questions, you'll hear the jury's opinion on these. Homework, should we ban it? You know, they have banned homework in France. We'll find out what you think. The, AW, the AWU scandal, is that going to change your vote? Well, all of that, uh, what does the Prime Minister call it? Sleaze and um, something else. Is any of that going to stick? Will that change your vote? And the other thing we asked was, um, where is it now? Do you believe in man-made climate change? Not do you believe in climate change, because that's bleeding obvious. The climate's changing every day, every hour. But do you believe that man has had some effect on the climate? Yeah, we'll find out what you think a little bit later on. Speaking of Julia, by the way, have you seen this? I mean, if I don't get a chance to talk to you about it today, I'll certainly do it next week. I'll just, uh, this is a scene out of Java. Asylum seekers in Indonesia have labelled Julia Gillard a hero after learning that they will receive welfare payments and rent assistance should they be able to make it to Australia on a leaky boat. And the headline is, the ALP in doldrums at home, but Julia is a hero in Java. And that's how we're handling the boat people problem, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I'll show you this in a bit more detail later, but this is a wonderful John Stoneham cartoon. You'd remember Stoney in the news, and if you pick up a motoring magazine, you'll probably find some of his wonderfully clever cartoons, uh, and always to the point. Cartoonists are wonderful. How are you, John? They're eccentric. Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Well, John. you don't think all of this is a bit eccentric? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I could live here quite happily. A little bit over there, Bless I'd be heart. fine. Well, look, I have not discounted the fact that I will be living here. You might do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must tell you that down the back there, there's an inspection pit, you know, oh, where okay. you can put the car on the top yes. and climb down into Very the pit. Important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it, it's a double-edged thing, you see. So when I die, I, uh, what I want is that uh, they leave me my mobile phone a glass of red, <laughs> they put me in the pit, leave it alone for a couple of days in case I'm not dead, and okay. then just bring in the Mini Crete truck yes. and uh, fill it up. Yes. Multi-purpose yes. establishment. So we're actually sitting in your graveyard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, if you look around carefully at some of the cars, <laughs> it's a bit like an automotive Grave graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get into cartooning? Oh, I uh, did it since I was a kid. In fact, my father banned me from drawing on the walls because he had calcimine them after I finished. Calcimine, so, lovely yeah, old-fashioned yeah, word, so isn't no, it? Yeah, you can tell by the <laughs> age. Um, yeah, no, I've just always done it. I, I used to get the cuts at school for drawing mm. cartoons because when I was at school, you weren't allowed mm. to draw anything like that. So, I, yeah. think, I think you are brilliant. The other thing about cartoonists is that you can go so much further than any other journalist. Ah, that's the reason that editors who are smart enough <laughs> to have a cartoonist, that's why you're there. You can say things in cartoons that you can't say in print. Do cartoonists ever get sued? Ah, uh, yes. A fellow called Patrick Cook got, I think it was Patrick Cook, got, uh, got uh, taken to court uh, by the Siebel people because he uh, uh, accused them in a cartoon of changing the, uh, the skyline of Sydney to make it look ugly. <laughs> and um, and uh, they hurt. tried to sue him, and it was yeah. thrown out of court. And then that, the president was then set because the judge decreed that it, while it looked like Siebel and while it was, uh, he was named in the cartoon, it was only an artist's impression yeah. of him. So it didn't cut it in law. So the law. The law is very black and white, yeah. like a cartoon, really. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So did, did that was the, that the precedent's been set. So I, I can draw Julia Gillard in any way, shape or form in any, any sort of act I like. Yeah. And it's only an artist impression of someone who looks like Julia Gillard. You'd have to be really thick-skinned as a politician to cope with what a cartoonist can do to you. And the longer you're in office, yes. the more exaggerated become your characteristics. Oh, absolutely. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, John right. Howard's eyebrows got yeah. longer and they longer did. and longer. Yes, and he always drew Malcolm Fraser with a pipe. And Malcolm doesn't smoke. <laughs> but, that, but, but Larry Pickering just thought he should have a pipe in his mouth because he looked like a hayseed. <laughs> he was good too, Larry Pickering. I like him. Yeah, very I funny like. man, but very strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, to go from uh, cartooning to growing tomatoes, I, I, I can't see how you'd make oh, that well, leap. That was a washout, um, literally. Um, I went to a thing where he was launching his calendars, and his calendars have always depicted people completely naked. Yes. And one of the things at the Sussex Street in, si in Sydney, oh, Sussex Street's hotel, was that you, if you went along, you had to go nude. Uh, and I avoided that. Um, but uh, he, he was sort of talking to us as a gathering, and as a group of cartoonists, and he said, you, you know you've made it when you get a death threat. <laughs> and when I was at the news, I'd only been there a year and I got my first death threat. And I'm cheering. I'm saying, yay! Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, got a death threat. Made, well, you, you know, you talk about the fact that you can't really get sued, but uh, you can get killed. Uh, that oh, well. famous cartoon with the, uh, the, uh, the Muhammad with the bomb in his turban. Yes. Um, yeah, well, there are some people who don't take well, things to court. I used to they just take on, them seriously. Well, unfortunately, yes, they do. Yeah, um, and you, you've got to be careful of that. There is a, a, a line between being funny and being stupid. What's, and the, what's the cleverest cartoon you've ever seen? Do you have a favourite? Could be yours or somebody else's? I actually, it was uh, one that which the news, my editor, didn't understand. Do you remember my, uh, Lionel Murphy? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, and Senator Lionel, Murphy, Lionel Murphy. Yes, Senator totally Lionel general. Murphy. And uh, um, he was... Uh, knocking on the door of Bob Hawke. And Bob Hawke had come to the door um, in his nightgown with a nightcap and all the usual old things. And he wanted to, uh, he wanted to, he was trying to bring in some sort of law. And all I said, uh, all I had Bob Hawke saying was, go away, I'm trying to have an election. <laughs> <laughs> the editor came to me, and, or the, uh, the managing editor, <laughs> Roger Holden came to me and said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, he's going to call an election. Yes. And he looked at me for about four seconds and he said, OK, and he walked away. Yeah, yeah. Had no idea I meant erection. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> everyone else did. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, so you sort of, any, any cartoon you can get away with Blue Murder is a good one. Still on the car theme, um, Gough Whitlam, who lived in a very working class suburb in Sydney, Granville, I think. Yep. As soon as he became Prime Minister, he moved to Darling Point or Point Piper, I can't remember. As what. they do. As they do. And, uh, of course, he, he got rid of the old beaten-up um, Daimler, I think it was, which was the prime ministerial car, and he bought a brand-new Mercedes. And uh, the cartoonists had a field day with all of this sort of limousine lefty kind mm. of stuff. And uh, there's, there's Goff in the new Mercedes, leaning out the window, talking to the mechanic, and he's saying, I don't know, it's still pulling to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you have so much licence. I was very privileged to work at the news when uh, Hawke and Keating were in power. Oh, what fun. And uh, so that was a gift. Yes. And so, uh, and of course, when the news closed, uh, Keating had then taken his rightful position as uh, Prime Minister. But all the, the whole eight years that I was there, I was drawing cartoons about Keating taking over. Yes. And um, everyone so you knew were it. The, you did it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we always knew he would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah. you've got to plant the seed. Well, that's right. But the only... They have got to tell Bob, that's all. John, great <laughs> to see you. Thank you. Happy Christmas. Thank you. You too. The great John Stoneham. Rundle Mall is conveniently Christmas. With over 700 retailers, 15 arcades and centres, four leading department stores and extended trading hours from Sunday the 9th of December, Rundle Mall has Christmas covered. And for your convenience, we're open on Proclamation Day the 26th of December and New Year's Day too. Visit rundlemall.com for the chance to win $500 cash. Simply enter the code word CHANNEL44. Uniquely Rundle Mall. Scammels, South Australia's specialist estate auctioneers. Visit us at 7 Chapel Street Norwood or at www.scammelauctions.com.au Is trust important to you when building life's biggest investment? Well, look no further than Rossdale Homes. A South Australian family-owned company whose mantra is because trust is a must, has been building quality homes for people like you and me 
for over 30 years. Rossdale Homes guarantees an absolute fixed price. No hidden extra charges. Choose off the plan or work with their building consultants to design your own. Or visit their website, Rossdale Homes. Because trust is a must. The Court of Public Opinion will be in Rundle Mall in just a couple of seconds, but uh, the jury is here with me. Christine Esau. Hello, Jeremy. Carly Cheney. Hi, Jeremy. And Julia. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. I've got to ask you this before we delve into these interesting questions. Uh, they've done a survey. They're always doing surveys. Mm. Just amazing. They reckon that the hardest year of marriage is the first one. Mm. And then it gets easier when you get up to 40 years of marriage. You're, you're happy. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys think there's anything to that? I do. I, I read the um, report and it um, said that the first year was difficult for different reasons than I would have suggested. I think it's just getting to, used to living with somebody else. Oh, I and I certainly remember finding it difficult. I'd never cooked a meal that long ago. My mother had always made the bed for me. So just having to do things myself was difficult enough Rude without shock. having to look, <laughs> absolutely, and without having to look after somebody else as well. So yeah. um, that made yeah. it even harder. Mm. It's yeah. probably a little bit different now because a lot of people live together before they mm. get married. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then I don't think that quite applies, but absolutely mm. if you haven't and you still lived at home. And yeah. so as the report shock. goes for yeah, 40 exactly. years, you know, it had to be our generation. Well, you have to be doing it for a while, I think. Julia, to get yeah. the hang of it. You obviously love them when if you're there for 40 years, yeah. so you really don't care about... You well, know, it becomes a habit, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good habit. A, a good right. habit, yes. Now, we went out into Rundle Mall and we asked some uh, four questions uh, this week. Do you believe in man-made climate change? And this is what you had to say. If it's going to cost a fortune, I'm not really worried about it, So, because nobody else is worried about it. If, you, if we're talking about changing something, it's like... You just can't change something straight away, like you decide and then you change it. It always takes like time, process. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's much awareness out there, so that's why I don't think about it. Yeah. Do you believe in man-made climate change? Well, from the internet, uh, Aaron says, I believe in women-made, well, I see, man-made climate change, woman-made climate change. Aaron believes woman-made, okay. Mm. Uh, Paul says, uh, yes, but please stop the false press that it is just the human race. Climate change has been happening for millions of years, affecting the planet through many different and natural ways. Graydon says, no, it's arrogant to think that we can affect this great system, this solar system. Yes, we do pollute, but the alarmists have been proven to have got it badly wrong. Climate change is as old as the Earth itself. Chris says, I am sure every time a volcano erupts, the amount it spews into the atmosphere will put most theories to bed. Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. And Tristan, mm -hmm. uh, climate change is a pretty natural process. We are currently in a period of warming. Yes, uh, we impact this, but never forget that the dinosaurs were destroyed by a massive increase in global cooling. We may never know the answer in our lifetime. Yeah, uh, by the way, if, if you ever have a chance to look at the quadrant online, there's a fantastic article by uh, Professor Michael Kiley, and it's called Climateers In For Their Cop. And there's one hell of a brave scientist, because if, they, if scientists dare to question this mantra of climate change, they have their funding denied them, they have all sorts of trouble, mm. uh, all sorts of intimidation. Do you have an opinion? I think, <laughs> who would you like to talk to first? Um, I, I think um, all uh, the people interviewed in Rundle Mall are correct. I think that climate change has been around for millions of years, and yes, there are periods of global warming, global cooling, but we also exacerbate it. And so, um, you know, we're uh, raising more cattle to feed our own, feed ourselves, and so there's more cattle out there. They pollute, we drive cars, they pollute, we want faster means of transport, yes. they pollute. So we're contributing to the problem, we're exacerbating it. Um, what's the answer? I don't really know, and it won't be something that perhaps I'll have to live with it, but other generations will, and well, it's a worry. Well, sure, sure ain't a carbon tax, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Carly? Oh, look, I think we certainly have to look after our planet and be responsible for the yes. planet, and that, that's you know, a lot of things involved in that. 
you know, even right down to garbage collection and things like that. But not, not as far as climate change, as far as it affecting the weather and things, because right through, even, even in the Bible, they had seven good years and seven bad mm -hmm. years, yes. you know, where there was, you know, no mm -hmm. harvest. So, I mean, those, that's throughout generations. Well, I think it's a combination of natural disaster and just um, the natural gases and the animals that are around that mm. are emitting um, the gases that are affecting the climate. But it's it's been going on for years, and I don't think that it's really a man-made thing. I think it's 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 um, really natural. Well, um, change has got to be inevitable, hasn't it? I mean, it the only thing we have to do is to manage change. Whether you're running a business uh, or you're running a country, you've got to manage change. It's inevitable. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It's not a tough one. It. I don't think there's any yeah. answers. I was driving down our street and they've just delivered new bins. And outside some of the apartment blocks, there are hundreds of red, yellow and green top bins. I'm sure there's a better ma way of managing the rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, that's one well, thing we're very good at producing. Now, the other question we asked was, will plain packaging on cigarettes work? You know, the plain packaging instead of the promotional packaging or the colourful packaging, the logos and all that kind of thing. Will that stop people smoking? Here's what you think. Yes, I, I, think, so, yeah, I think we've just got to support it. We want to uh, the government cut the smoke, you know, because it's not good for the health, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, like, there's all different types of smokes, but they're all making it look like they're all exactly the same, so, yeah. Would that influence on of buying a smoking? Like, would you buy it? Yeah, I still buy them. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make a difference. It just means I have to wait longer when they're trying to look for them, because they don't know which is which. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a good idea. Yeah? Yeah, because I don't think smoking is good. Yeah. It's not good for your lungs, so, yeah. Obviously that impact. And I think, it, yeah, I think it's even worse that people buy cigarettes for young people that are not meant to have cigarettes. So, yeah. I think it may be a good thing, but the people that smoke it won't deter them. As as the the gross uh, images on the cigarettes didn't deter them. No point because. I don't know, people that smoke, they smoke. It's not yeah. going to change anyone's opinion. It's not going to change any like no one's opinion. It just makes it look ugly. Yeah. Why? That's it. There's no point. Well, uh, from the internet, and thank you very much for your feedback, uh, Paul says, no, it won't. It'll create a black market, and if the world was serious, they'd just simply ban the sale and the manufacture of cigarettes. Yeah, why don't they just make them, you know, $50 a pack? Wouldn't that do? Uh, Graydon says, um, seems to be, some smokers already reckon that cigarettes taste worse in plain packaging than in the fancy brand <laughs> packaging. <laughs> well, that's probably right. Yeah, I guess that could be right. And Tristan says, yes, it works. I've already quit. And I know many people who dislike smoking uh, when looking at the photos that are depicted on the packs. So for some, it's working. Julia, mm. did you ever smoke? I did, yes. Yeah? And What um, stopped you? Well, um, I wanted to live to a ripe old age and um, I think that uh, you know it's really not good for your health I did some work on it and also my husband um, put me off smoking um, and you know said that um, if you don't give up yeah. you know it's so hypocritical because the government makes so much money out of cigarettes mm. Mm. with their taxes and all mm. and uh, one way of doing it, of course, is to say, well, anyone who comes, comes down with a, a cigarette-related illness is not covered by insurance or, or the doctors won't treat you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't uh, do that. Can't do well, self-inflicted damage. I mean, hell, imagine being a doctor and you take somebody's lung out and you find that they're smoking the next day. Mm -hmm. yeah, but then That's there's right. alcohol-related um, yes. illness too, and how are we going to stop that? Stop you know, that. Where do we stop? Um, yeah. It's another vice. It's one that I'd love people to be educated against smoking. I used to smoke mm. and um, for much the same reason as Julia, I gave up probably because I became smart enough to realise that it was bad for my health, yeah. bad for the lines on my face. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I wish I'd known earlier and I'm sure that I'd, um, our children are better educated than we were because as you said, the advertising was something like it was Peter Stuyvesant country or oh. um, you know, you travelled overseas if you had Benson and Hedges cigarettes. Yeah, you were glamorous and... Absolutely, and, and, it was and, and, a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, um, we had gold tip 
Sobranis, which, you know, at any cocktail party looked ever so smart. And young girls will do it because it makes them feel sophisticated. So Absolutely. So um, brown paper packaging, I'm not sure because I think that the um, photographs of cancers on the packet my god mm. if that Maybe doesn't I turn thought, you off i think i'd rather see that on the packaging than the brown paper yeah, i think that's going to be there as well but all the logos and Excellent. glam is gone yeah. great uh, in movies for instance yeah. that's out the window isn't it yeah. okay well let's move on but uh, one way of fixing the problem would be to just uh, the cigarette companies to put out uh, cigarette uh, cases and no, no cigarettes in them. You just buy your brown paper, <laughs> plain packaged cigarettes, and put them in your, in your gold, schmick, gold <laughs> with the logos and everything. One of those. More just than one good way idea, to... Jeremy. That's only going to help the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it won't help the problem. But I'm saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat, and the, there's no shortage of money or imagination within the oh. cigarette companies. Oh. Homework. Should we ban it? Here's what you think. We should always have homework. For me, I don't like homework, but when I don't have it, it's just boring. So it's like. Yes. We must have it. Yes. That's the whole point of schooling, like studying and stuff. I think that's what I find. I find myself always doing homework, at, like when I get home. It's just, yeah. don't really do anything for myself. Like I've stopped horse riding and everything and just... Oh, wow. I'm a, I'm a retired teacher and I say, no way. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I think it's probably not a good idea because when you're young, then you can have some really easy homework and then as you get older, they get prepares you for studying for exams and things like that. So. Homework's pretty good, like, no one ever does it, but the idea behind it is good. So I don't think they need to ban homework, they just need to change the policies with it. School is for schoolwork, home is for your own personal time, in my opinion. I tell you what, uh, Rundle Mall is not only the heart of shopping in this town, but it's also the heart of interesting and thinking people. Uh, Paul Murray, question one. Limited to one hour, allowing better quality family time. Aaron says school system needs to be abolished completely. <laughs> yeah, why stop with homework? Get rid of the whole thing. Uh, Graydon says, uh, I think Graydon's got something to do with education. No, it shouldn't be, but it shouldn't be overdone. Learning at home is as important as it is at school. I just question, you know, what is actually learning? I mean, education is a very broad subject. Uh, Tristan says, no, it's an important part uh, it's discipline and it's part of being successful in life. Uh, and Dave says homework should not be used by teachers, students and the Department of Education as an option of accelerating through the set curriculum. Oh, you've thought this out well. Homework should be tailored and set to encourage children to learn and understand the concept and value of independent research learning and ultimately I, th I think this guy has done his homework. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely and uh, Joel the only homework required is just no TV. You know there is a school in Sydney, Maroubra Bay Public, and they have just banned, no not banned, no in fairness, they have uh, made homework optional but they have banned homework in France. Not allowed to set homework. Coralie what do you think? I think it really depends on the child to be honest. Um, it's quite interesting that the children that are you know very well um, you know, academically doing really well tend to actually want to do homework and yeah. extend and, and improve whereas kids that aren't doing maybe so well don't and I, again I suppose it's it's on the way you bring them up as to how far they want to advance and what that will give them later in life you know the old action and consequences the action you take now has consequences later on in life where will it lead you so um, I, I think it does depend on the child, but yeah. certain homeworks is probably of no value. Mm -hmm. Christine? I worry about the children, the students at Maroubra High or Maroubra Public. Yeah. Uh, by the time they find out whether this idea works or not, these late. kids could be way <laughs> behind their yeah. contemporaries in getting a job. Um, I, I think homework is an opportunity, perhaps even for a catch-up for students that take longer to grasp ideas, mm. and that's not a bad thing. Um, a child that's smart will be able to do that, tackle the project easier perhaps, but that's the luck of the draw. Where I worry is when parents do their children's homework, and mm. that's a whole separate issue. Oh yeah, well that happens. And um, they sit to year 12 three times, and <laughs> then the student finds themselves <laughs> studying medicine mm. and hasn't got a ghost of a chance yeah. at university. Well, I don't know if it's an so, insult or not, but uh, Christopher, uh, he, he does his homework. He never asks me 
which must mean he doesn't think I could do it. <laughs> which is well, probably right. Probably a good thing. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> Julian? Um, I think that they should introduce a new subject at school and, and it's called homework. And the teacher's there to help the child um, or the children with their homework. I think that would be the way to go because there's a lot of parents that um, are good at um, home, doing the homework with the children because they're, they're teachers or um, they're yep. well educated and there's others that aren't and they can't help their children with homework. No, but no, 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 that's true. And what did, what did you tell me that uh, no wonder they banned um, uh, homework in France because what, what, did you, what did you tell me that they, they, go, to, they go to school at nine o'clock <laughs> in the morning and they stay there till nine o'clock at night. So, I mean, they couldn't really set homework. Well, when no. was the kid gonna do it? That's bedtime at right. school. That's, at that's, school. That's interesting crazy. story. Mm. Now, the, the last question we went out to talk to you about was um, the AWU scandal. That is the establishment of, uh, and I cannot help but believe that this is just one example of slush funds, but the idea that uh, it's okay to establish a slush fund extort money from people and uh, call it what you like. It certainly is a uh, uh, something that the Prime Minister has had to weather in the last few weeks. Will it change your vote? She's not in my good books. I, I uh, refuse to, to, um, to even recognise that woman. I'm sorry. It's a bit suspicious. Yes. Yeah. yeah very There's something happened there and uh, they obviously want to bury it, I think. If she doesn't pull her socks up, well, I won't vote for her. I think she, she, she's uh, loose with the truth, to be honest. Uh, she, got in, she got into power through the back door from the very start. It wasn't good, and I don't think it's good now. I don't think it'll ever be good with her in power. Well, will the scandal or the smear change your vote? Graydon says, no, I wasn't going to vote for her, meaning Julia anyway, just affirms an earlier decision, <laughs> Dave. No, whatever the truth is a long time ago, she has more than uh, shown her true colours in recent times with regard to this issue and others. Joel, Julia Gillard will win the next election as the Liberals have done nothing but whinge for six years. We have the best economy in the world, the best lifestyle, I'd agree with that, the most freedom. The Liberals only want to start wars. Joel, I mean, yeah, OK, <laughs> that's your opinion. What's yours, Julia? Uh, it won't change my vote. Um, I just think that um, she, while we're concentrating on what she's done in the past, uh, where the country's going broke. And I think that she needs to step down and resign and let's move forward with um, another politician. Yeah. Prime Minister, I should say. Yes. I think if you're a staunch party voter, either way, it's mm. not going to change your vote. Mm. But um, Like Joel. <laughs> but, I, but in the meantime, um, the old, you know, be sure your sins will find you out clause comes in yeah. and um, be careful what you do here because ultimately it can affect things later on down the track, the old yeah. action and consequence again. Yeah, well, I keep on thinking it's the economy, stupid. You know, that really is the key thing. Christine? I think it's interesting that Liberal played that card so early. I wonder whether they might not have waited until later and closer to the election to play it, and I think it would have influenced a lot of votes. It's changing. simmered for a long, long and time. It has, and um, I wonder why they didn't sort of hold it tight a little longer and try to benefit from it a little more, because I think it will be a vote changer for swinging voters near the election, but by then it will be all over and forgotten. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Great to see you all. Great I think we've got too, one more show before Christmas. Ah, good. I'll wear my Christmas earrings. Well, what do you, what do you think about Christmas tree? It's beautiful. It's fabulous. fabulous. Great to see you. Lovely to see you. Have a good week. Me. See you next time. Thank you. The jury, this is the Court of Public Opinion. I'll send the sun smiling through. Great house. Thank you. Rossdale built it for us. We love it. I'll show you through. We wanted a house with a barley feel, so we worked with their building consultant and designers to develop a plan we liked. They were so flexible and cooperative. When it was all designed, we got an absolute fixed price and they stuck to it. No extra charges and their people were fantastic to work with. We're actually thinking of building a new home. You should go and see all their displays and talk to them about your ideas. It's the best thing we've ever done. Rossdale Homes. Because trust is a must. It's a home theatre.
It's an office. It's a salon. It's a bar. It's a garage. Garage Mahal can transform your shed, carport, garage or undercroft into your favourite room in the house. You'll be surprised with what we can do with that disorganised messy space. Regardless of your reasons, your lifestyle or hobby, we can create whatever you can imagine. So call Garage Mahal today on 1300 839 353. I sort of pride myself on being able to recognise a good idea when I, I see it, you know, the kind of thing. A, a good idea whose time has come is a very powerful thing. And I, I read about this thing called Our SA, and the man behind it is Mark Cahoon, um, who is a, a man of many different talents and uh, uh, skills. Thank you. Good of you to come in. Thank you. Thank you, John. And happy Christmas. Thank you. You too. Now, yeah. I see a lot in Adelaide about, you know, let's change the image. Everyone sort of seems to think there's something wrong, mm. but they think, well, we'll get a thinker in residence to come in and lecture us mm. or hector us. Does any of this touch you? I oh, mean, you've, got, you've rolled up your sleeves. Absolutely. And you are actually doing something about yeah. our city. If I ever get acknowledged for anything, I'd like to be acknowledged as a doer. We do yep. what we say we're going to do. But therein lies a problem, I think. The thinker in residence should be a doer in residence. Absolutely. And let's start doing things in South Australia. And let's look at his or her salary. <laughs> well, exactly. And then maybe pay him or her on results. Exactly. I don't, I don't quite understand it, but if you were running the joint, I guess you'd run it a bit differently. Well, absolutely, and, and accountabilities and pushing accountabilities down to the lowest level is, is you know, fundamental to running a good business, isn't it? So, and getting better value out of, out of people's contributions. Yeah, now our SA, I know mm. a lot of people belong to it, have mm. joined it. Tell me where it came from, what was the idea? Well, I've lived and worked all my life in South Australia, and mm. over that time I've, I've met a lot of people and been involved in quite a few businesses. And this is a, an online business directory where our providers are prepared to provide South Australians with benefits. And that's a whole range. You come on board as a provider, you either provide services or you provide products. This is a buy. <laughs> it wants to join. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> In this garage, you can expect almost anything. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> this is an amazing garage. Um, so you come on as a provider. You provide either services or products uh, for our members. Uh, you can go to the movies for $10 instead of $18.50, as an example with Wallace. You can get your RM Williams through trims at 25% off. Uh, there's a whole range. Banner hardware, as an example, you can get trade prices. And also on the services side, if you need a will done, if you need uh, accountants, lawyers. Um, so our SA is actually transaction driven. It's yeah. not just a, a feeling of uh, let's, let's support South Australian businesses. If you actually want to buy something, hmm. we will give you the name of a company and a person to transact with. Yeah. So we're actually doing the deals. And the logistics of this would seem to be horrendous. It is a big project and can I tell you, it's so exciting because the number of people that I'm meeting and the businesses out there that you get to, to know is really, South Australia has got so many hidden gems. There's 95,989 businesses in South Australia. How many again? 95,989. So the market is huge. Mm. So this is a huge project. Um, but. Uh, where we're going with it, uh, members get a card yes. that gives them uh, their entitlements when they go to the businesses. The Adelaide 36ers have got a resource and they've got uh, 4,000 members. So they've actually purchased 4,000 cards and they're gifting them to their members. So that they are saying now, here's an opportunity for our members to go out into the South Australia and support South Australian businesses. So they're gifting cards to their members. And we're talking currently, we presented to a board the other day for 40,000 cards uh, in one transaction. So the loyalty card, we're the co-branded, mm. the 36 is on one side, our SA on the other. And this will generate traffic into South Australian stores. Yep, yep, yep. So you get, as a member, you get it coming and going. Correct. 
How many members have you got now? Because I've seen the list and it's very long. Well, we've got several hundred uh, providers, uh, but we've issued in the last five months 8,000 cards. So we push two barrows. We need providers. We yes. need companies to come on board yep. who want, South, want to offer South Australians an opportunity to shop uh, and trade with them. Yep. It's a two-way street. Two-way yeah, street. Which and we also need more members. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's working extremely well and the potential is enormous. And what does it cost? Um, one flat fee. Yeah. We don't have a tiered structure. And whether you are Santos or whether you're a small boutique, it's $240 to become a provider. Yep. Your business is promoted for 12 months on our website. Uh, we send out electronically delivered uh, emails to all the members regularly. Um, so, and when you come on board as uh, $240, to push it down to the lower level, which is where we're going to get the traction, is we actually give you 10 memberships. So you can gift them to your staff. So yeah. you can reward and recognise your staff when they're not at work they can go to the movies for ten dollars and they can get all the benefits that are normally reserved for the the upper management hmm. so you can we gift them all to the staff an individual card if somebody just wants to buy a card it's thirty dollars for an individual membership so you pay us two hundred if you're a business you pay two forty and we give you three hundred dollars worth of cards so it's a good deal to start off with who are the most enthusiastic are they the bigger businesses or the smaller one man two man three man show well, South Australia is predominantly small to medium businesses, yeah. and that's our target market. Uh, there's something like 80% of South Australian businesses employ less than 20 people, yeah. and that's perfect because some of these businesses haven't got the resources to do put reps on the road and large advertising campaigns. We, we, they pick us up, and they get the promotion for 12 months for $240. And you, you didn't start out as a marketer, did you? Or No, I... Um, I actually joined TAA for 12 months uh, as the office boy. I wanted to become a school teacher, uh, but finished up spending 25 years in the airline industry yeah. uh, with TAA and Australian Airlines, which was fascinating. We got opportunity to travel the world and uh, meet some wonderful people in South Australia. Um, they offered me, I did the office boy bit to the state manager uh, without leaving the state. Um, then they said, we want you in Melbourne. And that was when I said, I had to make a decision, do I, do I leave this fantastic uh, city and state of ours? And I said, no, I wasn't prepared to do that. So I left uh, and uh, started my own group of businesses. Yeah, well, we're very glad that you stayed and that you did. Mm. But your story is very similar to uh, Jim Parkinson, who was the head of Ansett. Ansett. They offered him this great big promotion and mm. he said, no, I'll, I'd rather leave you than leave mm. South Australia. Yes, well... I hear this so often, and uh, in the Defence Forces now, uh, just yesterday, uh, people were saying that uh, very senior people in the Defence Force, they, they do their two years in South Australia, yes. and yes. they're now leaving yes. the Defence Forces yes. because they don't want to now go to other states. Yeah, it's a funny thing, and a very familiar story. Uh, the, the, the bloke in Sydney, uh, he gets the word, you're being moved to Adelaide, mm. and he will sit down, I won't say he'll cry, but he'll say, what have I done? What did I do wrong? Exactly. What, what are you doing this to me uh, for? And, and he, he cops it and he comes to Adelaide and then after two or three years he would rather quit than leave. Uh, it's a very absolutely. familiar story. It happens well, over and over again. And we've mixed with literally thousands of people over the years and that, that is just a common story. Yeah. It happens. So we have got an absolute gem here. Uh, but we don't know it because no. a lot of people just don't have anything to compare it with. Now what's the, uh, the, the address? Online? Uh, OSA.com.au. Simple. Simple. Yep. Simple to log on, uh, join up as an individual member for $30. You make application to become a provider. We contact you within 24 hours to approve that. Uh, very simple, five steps. We send you a confirmation, 10 uh, membership cards, uh, an invoice, and you're loaded into the system. Away we go. Great idea. Mm. Happy Christmas. Nice to talk to you. Thank you, Jeremy. Mark Cahoon, this is the Court of Public Opinion. Just before I give you the uh, pet of the week, and hopefully we can find a, a nice home for the pet of the week, uh, some anniversaries. December 7, the, the uh, day of infamy, as many people call it, 1941, 360 Japanese planes attacked the US Pacific Fleet anchored in Pearl Harbor. The day of infamy indeed. Happy birthday to the late Andy Williams. And oh, it's the anniversary back in 1942 
of the birth of the welfare state. 1942, I wonder what people did before 1942. Anyway, that's the welfare state officially envisaged in Britain with the publication of the Deverage Report, hailed as a charter for social security by bringing the whole population into an insurance scheme or what we might call government control. You know how they like controlling things. The pet of the week. Now, um, <laughs> the pet of the week is Rampage. Hello, I'm Rampage. Sounds like an adult movie star, doesn't it? Um, Rampage, I'm the pet of the week. I'm a one-year-old boy, uh, a medium-sized cat, Rampage in name only. I'm really a very sweet one-year-old who arrived here with my brother Ryder. Now it really does sound like an adult movie, doesn't it? Ryder and Rampage. Um, we were a bit shy to begin with, but we have now come out of our shells and with some care and TLC, during our time at the AWL, they've all fallen in love with us. I'm fit and healthy and ready to go to your home. Uh, I'm desexed, microchipped, vaccinated, health checked. I'm only $75. Come and see me at the Animal Welfare League. 1 to 19 Cormac Road at Wingfield. Uh, their telephone number is 83481300. Or you can just go to the, uh, the internet and you can go uh, to awlsa.com.au and have a look at Rampage. Very nice looking cat. Very nice looking cat. When you come up from the dead, stand in the hall and make a road man. When you do the thing you shouldn't do. Now you've got to watch those Rundle Mall commercials because there's $500 for you to win which will help uh, cheer up Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, um, uh, a lovely gift would be this book that John Stoneham has written. It's called Grand Prix Caricatures, done in his wonderful style. And you've got to buy that on the internet as you buy all sorts of things these days. History Motors at bigpond.com. History Motors at bigpond.com. And you can uh, buy the book. Don't forget the wishing tree for Christmas which is at Kmart in Rundle Mall. And also I want you to look at this. Maybe you've seen it, I don't know, but it went, as they say, feral on the internet. Um, this is, at Christmas time, I think one of the most moving things I've ever seen. A woman recorded on her mobile phone in Times Square in New York, a policeman. It wasn't a setup. I don't believe it's a setup. A policeman gives a homeless man freezing weather. Can you imagine a homeless man, no shoes, winter in New York, penniless, Christmas time. A policeman gives this homeless man a pair of socks and shoes. Take a look. I just looked down at this gentleman's feet and you could see the blisters from a distance. And as I said, it was just so cold that uh, I knew I had to do something. I went up to him and I was like, where, where are your shoes? He's like, it's okay, officer. He's like, I've never had a pair of shoes. Uh, he's like, but God bless you, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing. So I just knelt down, put the, uh, the socks on him, the shoes on him, lifted him back up. And uh, I said, listen, sir, I was like, you want to grab a cup of coffee? Maybe we'll get something to eat. And uh, he goes, no, officer. He goes, uh, you know, he's like, no, officer. He's like, listen, uh, you've done enough. He said, God bless you. I, mean, I keep it in my bulletproof vest. Uh, I mostly keep it because... Uh, I think it's an important reminder that, especially now, you know, like some people have it really tough. And when you're having a bad day, you might think, you know, things can't get any worse. And then you see something like this and you remember, you know, people have it worse. And What's on in Adelaide? Well, here is the lady who can tell us chapter and verse. Betty Samus, hi. Thank you. What a lovely intro. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you too, Jeremy. I, I, I don't know if you had seen that uh, bit with the homeless man. That was beautiful. Yeah. Just amazing. Can you not play things like that before this segment? No. Because I get extremely emotional. Yeah. I'm a drama queen, you know. <laughs> You've come to the right place. Speaking of drama queens, guess who's in town this Sunday night? She's a single mother. Hmm. Looks amazing at 43. She's been voted uh, this year's most powerful celebrity by Forbes magazine. All right. And she's just walked away from a TV job that paid her 12 million a year. Do you know who walked that is? away? She walked away. How much did she want? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I take it. Jennifer Lopez is here oh, right. for the first time in Australia. Her Dance Again uh, tour. And um, I think it's going to be a great show. I actually want to go. 
you want to come along? Well, it's a $12 million act, yes, I'd <laughs> like to see that. <laughs> well, do you know some of J-Lo's songs? If you had my love, waiting for tonight. Yes. Yes. Uh, is that bump a da bump a dang 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 It is a little bit. It is. I know how you feel about that bump a bump bump and stuff. <laughs> it is a little bit. But uh, spectacular dancers. <laughs> She's got that cat suit, which I'm sure you're going to. Oh, yes. Absolutely love. Does my Jumpsuit. tail look big in this? Well, her bottom is famous. And if oh, it, it looks is. big. Insured, I believe. The bigger, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now something for families. Lights on uh, Victoria Square. If you've been past Victoria Square lately, have you seen the what beginning? This beginning is like a huge Christmas tree starting yes. to um, take shape, and it's go they're going to turn the lights on this Friday night. Fantastic. Lord Mayor uh, Stephen Yarwood would turn them on at five o'clock, and there's going to be celebrations till nine at night. Great. Kids love this stuff. Yes. That's what I love doing. There's is what, the brewery on this year? The bre Did you take Amber? And oh, the children kind of a, it's to the brewery. It's a traditional thing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? I've got some information about this. Um, I love these notes. I just love how we're just all... Everything's just naturally done around here. It's for 56 years the South Australian Brewery Company has decorated the banks of the River Torrens yes. with colourful lights and nursery rhyme characters. 56 years. Isn't that amazing? But what they've got there is now food halls, a stall, sorry. They've got uh, the clowns that the kids can, you know, pull little balls into and, you know, side shows. So, look, there's, it, there's car parking at the entertainment centre and it does get very, very busy. But the best time is to go at dusk. Yes. When the sun's just heading down. So yes. Traditional thing. Got to be done. The traditional thing. It's got to be done. And you've brought along our special guests. I would like to say it's a garage band because I know you've been looking for one, but they're not. Well, it's a great band in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> in a great garage. Uh, it's the long run, the Eagles show. This is on this Saturday at Stonyfield Winery. Uh, there is a two or three course dinner and the food is always beautiful at Stonyfield. After two, out, two sellout shows, Acoustic Juice bring their show, The Long Run. It's the greatest songs of the Eagles to Stonyfield this Saturday. What's your favourite Eagles song? Oh, I love Desperado, yeah. Heartache Tonight. It's got a bit of a rock edge, Heartache yeah. Tonight. You know, I love all my little rock tunes. What do you like? Peaceful, easy feeling, I think. Do you think we can get them to play that today? Well, they'd know it by heart, but I love the, the sound. I mean, it's just a wonderful, wonderful song. Wait till you hear these boys sing as well. I'm sure you'll be heading down Stonyfield to Stonyfield. Stonyfield Winery. How long are they there for? They're only there on Saturday night. Okay. Well, they're going to play us out Fabulous. They'll play us out. There's nothing like a little music for Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. I'll see you, you next too. week. Fabulous. I'll see you then. Thank you again. All the best, Betty. You too. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next week. Thanks to Rossdale Homes, our sponsors, and uh, Garage Mahal, our new sponsors, the Rundle Mall, everyone, all the shopkeepers and all the people in Rundle Mall, hair artistic and tailors of distinction. Have a great week. We'll see you for the last show next week. And we will be played out by a group. You may know them better as Acoustic Juice. I know them as the Eagles, and you can enjoy them at the Stonyfell Function Centre, 7 o'clock, one show only, Saturday night, this coming Saturday night, the long run. The Eagles show. Ladies and gentlemen, believe in yourself and good night. I like the way your sparkling earrings lay against your skin so brown And I want to sleep with you in the desert tonight With a billion stars all around Cause I got a peaceful easy feeling I know
Rundle Mall is conveniently Christmas. With over 700 retailers, 15 arcades and centres, four leading department stores and extended trading hours from Sunday the 9th of December, Rundle Mall has Christmas covered. And for your convenience, we're open on Proclamation Day the 26th of December and New Year's Day too. Visit rundlemall.com for the chance to win $500 cash. Simply enter the code word CHANNEL44. Uniquely Rundle Mall.